Over a decade ago, the coalition government, led by Tony Abbott, issued a warning to the world. The Australian government has introduced the toughest border protection measures ever. The message is simple. If you come to Australia illegally by boat, there is no way you will ever make Australia home. In the intervening years, asylum seekers and people smugglers have tried their luck anyway. Australian Offshore Border Patrol has intercepted a group of asylum seekers attempting to reach the mainland by boat. The Australian reports... The Australian reports passengers boarded a Navy vessel when their boat was burnt close to the Cocos Keeling Islands. Border Force reports there have been just 12 boats from Sri Lanka since Operation Sovereign Borders began in 2013, indicating a fresh surge in arrivals. When those boats, often rickety, repurposed fishing boats, set out on the slow journey to Australia, they're easy for authorities to spot. For a long time, the people smugglers' goal has been to reach Australian territory on Christmas Island or to be picked up by an Australian Navy vessel. When they're intercepted by Australia's military-led border security operation, known as Operation Sovereign Borders, the asylum seekers on board are whisked away to detention centres on Christmas Island and Nauru for processing. The boats themselves, which are often wooden and riddled with faults, are set alight. That's another warning to people smugglers that the vessels that prop up their operations are single use only, and to would be asylum seekers that their safe passage to Australia isn't guaranteed. But now, people smugglers have pivoted to a bold new business model. They're using smaller, faster, and more reliable boats to bring asylum seekers to Australian shores dropping them in treacherous and sometimes croc-infested waters before speeding back out to international waters where Operation Sovereign Borders doesn't have any sway. It's a completely new technique, what we're seeing now. Paige Taylor is the Australian's Western Australia Bureau Chief. She's been reporting on asylum seekers and border policy for decades. What I'm being told is they're coming in really fast, they're dropping their customers off and they're taking off just as fast. One other thing I'm hearing is that The people who have been delivered to the mainland have been hiding for a couple of days before they show themselves, before they seek help. And there's a feeling inside Border Force that that could be a tactic as well from the smugglers. Just give us a few days to get back into international waters, reduce the possibility that this very fast, valuable boat could be taken off us. The latest of those arrivals happened on the weekend. The group of men were dropped on a remote stretch of coast in WA's far north Kimberley region. The terrain on the Mitchell Plateau is beautiful but dangerous, and the water is brimming with saltwater crocs. Their tracks are regularly seen by traditional owners near the former World War II Truscott Air Base, where the men were first spotted. I've been there. Uh, It is extremely rugged. It's extremely hot and inhospitable. I'll tell you what, I would not want to walk around the bush in that area. You just, everywhere you put your feet, there's danger. The traditional owners of that area, they have a really good understanding of which crocodiles patrol which beaches, which beaches may not have a crocodile patrolling at that time. Their knowledge is very detailed and they share that knowledge among themselves, of course, but also among visitors. And I think what was very concerning for them when this group arrived undetected is that they had no way of telling them what you're in for. It's believed more than 100 personnel were deployed to Truscott after the asylum seekers arrived on Friday afternoon. But as is custom, Australian Border Force hasn't commented on it publicly. WA Police has. It said on Saturday evening it believed one man from the group was missing and that a search operation was in its early stages. That statement also acknowledged the difficulties officers faced in searching the rugged area for the missing asylum seeker. On Sunday morning, WA police said the man had been located not too far from the airbase in relatively good condition. Locals and sources close to the border force operation at Truscott told Page the men appeared to be of Chinese descent. That's really unusual. The last time Chinese asylum seekers arrived in Australia that I know of, and that's on the record, was in 2012. There was such an unusual event. The Australian flew me to Darwin to talk to those people. They'd sailed in on a yacht to Darwin Harbour and they were Falun Gong religion and they were seeking religious asylum. 
But in all my years back and forth from Christmas Island and visiting immigration detention centres, I, I have never met a Chinese person who has sought asylum by boat. Some members of the group were removed by the Australian Border Force shortly after their arrival, and those who remained were flown to Queensland on Sunday. From there, they'll board a plane to Nauru. Noticeably absent in this flurry of activity was the very thing Australian Border Force has been after for more than a decade a boat. But we know that Border Force is putting extra resources into the north. They've been running a lot of aerial surveillance. They've got extra staff up there. They're talking to Aboriginal groups who are rangers who know the area really well. And I think if they are able to get on top of that, then perhaps they can break this new business model. When we listened to Rear Admiral Saunter's comments in The Australian last month, He seemed to be highly aware of what he needed to do and he'd already acted. So maybe it's only a matter of time before the response starts to catch up with this new business model. But it is really weird, isn't it, that at a time when the P8s are patrolling that coast, a boat has got in and out without anyone knowing. Coming up, why this is the last thing Labor needs right now. While I've got you, don't forget subscribers to The Australian get breaking news alerts direct to their phones, newsletters, special events and the most lively and detailed news every day. Check us out at theaustralian.com.au. We'll be back after this break. Last month, Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill did something extraordinary she admitted the government has lost control of immigration. It's a monumental concession for Labor to make. That's because the party's been accused of being soft on borders by the coalition for decades now. Well, clearly, uh, the settings that the government's got in place aren't sufficient. Uh, The Prime Minister uh, is showing a lack of leadership, uh, a lack of strength and a weakness that is music to the ears of these people smugglers. Labor's historically taken a more humanitarian approach to boat arrivals, and they've paid dearly for it in political terms. In the lead-up to the 2007 federal election, Kevin Rudd said Australia had a moral obligation to those less fortunate. He ended offshore detention on Nauru and Manus Island and said mandatory detention would only be enforced if the government had no other options. Within the decade, that platform had been all but abandoned. That's because under Rudd and his successor, Julia Gillard, the boats returned, and asylum seekers were scammed, injured or killed in people smuggling operations. One of the most memorable and distressing episodes was the crash of a boat on the rocks off Christmas Island in 2010. Horrified locals watched as the boat was dashed to pieces and 50 people drowned, including children and the elderly. The outstretched hand of a woman grasping for life as frantic rescuers try to drag survivors from the boiling sea. We need to get life jackets down to these people. This was the refugee boat just seconds before it was swamped by huge waves. That moment changed the minds of many Australians. Even those who believed asylum seekers have a right to seek refuge could see why boat journeys should be discouraged. A lot of boats had capsized, even in fair weather, because they were junk. But this was happening in front of people's eyes. That's what was so jarring about it. People could actually see another human being go under the waves. It was really horrifying. It was a real turning point, actually, I think, for a lot of Australians. They knew about boats going under, but they'd never actually seen it. When Labor was punted from government in 2013, a time when illegal arrivals were a full-blown political crisis, Tony Abbott and later Scott Morrison doubled down on the coalition's hardline border security policies. We will be doing things differently as a new government. This is a border security operation. This is a new and a genuine resolve based on the coalition party's long-standing commitment and belief in strong border protection policies. It will be a tougher approach. This time around, Labor hasn't made drastic changes to border security. The problem is that people smugglers are figuring out ways around the operations that have mostly kept them at bay for over a decade. Friday's arrival is the third in the last six months, with two other boats carrying dozens of Bangladeshi and Pakistani asylum seekers 
reaching Australian shores in November and February. Aboriginal people from an isolated stretch of the WA coast have saved a group of people who arrived undetected on a boat from Indonesia. The Australians been told the group was in poor shape. and It's not known how long they had been on the mainland before traditional owners had found them. For some inside Labor, it's starting to look a lot like the bad old days. I think the government understands that it not only has to implement Operation Sovereign Borders, which it's doing, it has to be seen to implement it because in this space, perception is everything and smugglers love to sell a story, a completely untrue story, to their clients that things are softening. The Prime Minister's comments on Sunday show that he really understands that. While the government doesn't like to talk about operations as they're happening in Operation Sovereign Borders, what they do often do is put out a statement once a group has been sent to Nauru. We've seen that a couple of times now. And that's all part of the messaging. They like to be able to tell not only the media and the Australian public, but potential clients, this is not the way to get to Australia. These people are now in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on Nauru. Paige Taylor is the Australian's Western Australia Bureau Chief. Some of the nation's biggest businesses are fighting back against government policies they say could sink them. Subscribers can read that story exclusively right now at theaustralian.com.au.